Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. The anointing of our inheritance is the title of this devotion. The word anointing is the word Christ in Greek. In Hebrew, it's the word Messiah. Literally means rubbing oil in the skin. The anointed one or the spirit embodied one. That's the word anointing. And I tell you the truth, I believe, according to 1 John 2, verse 20 and verse 27, we all who are born again, who have Christ in us, have an anointing of the Holy One, as it is written there. We all have the spirit of adoption, the spirit of sonship, the spirit by which we cry, Abba, Father. I mean, without that, we're not a Christian, according to Romans 8, verse 8, 9, and 10, he who does not have the Spirit of Christ is not his, it says there. So the only way to truly be a Christian is to have Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory, Colossians 1, 27 through 29. So this, I want to talk to you today about the anointing of our inheritance, the spiritual embodiment that shows what part we are of, what family we are of, what heritage we have. And I find that most important. You see, by the Spirit, we know that dwells in human flesh. We know if this is a son of God or a son of the devil. That's what Jesus talked about in John chapter 8 and what the Apostle John talked about in his writing, in his first letter, 1 John, he talked about the children of God and the children of the devil. And it is the nature, the spirit that we bear. It is not the rituals of devotions, while these are valuable and important, no, it's the spirit you bear. Jesus was proven to be the Son of God by the Spirit of Holiness, Romans chapter 1 verse 4 says. He was proven by the Spirit of the living God coming into his dead body when he was in the grave for three days and three nights and giving life to that body. And he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Colossians 1 19 and 2 verse 9 and 10. And friends, this is the true foundation of Christianity. It says in 1 Timothy 3 verse 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was revealed in the flesh. Some people would like to separate the two, but not with God. No, God is revealed in the flesh. Jesus said in Luke chapter six and in Matthew, he said, you can see if somebody is of God by the kind of fruit, nature, character manifesting in their flesh. You see, by the fruit, he says, you know the root. You know what lives in the spirit, in the heart of the person. And friends, if we bear the spirit of our living God, if we bear the spirit of the only true living God, then it is to be obviously seen in us by having the fruit of love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, and so forth, which we read about in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. What are the fruits of God's indwelling spirit in our lives? You cannot say you're a Christian and then not show the fruit. That's not possible. And this is why it's important that we begin to learn these things we're talking about today. I personally believe that if we abide in Christ and let His Word abide in us, the fruit will come and the Heavenly Father will prune us when needed so that we can bear more fruit, better fruit and more excellent fruit as Jesus teaches in John 15. And here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 through 14, let's read. In Him, in Christ, also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. 
In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, listen now, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. I know it sounds a bit complicated, but it's about as simple as it can be. You see, when you heard the good news about the Lord Jesus and received him by faith, believing upon him and received him into your heart, the Holy Spirit came into your life and gave you new birth through the life of Christ. And the Holy Spirit coming into you is there yearning for you to be filled or baptized with the Holy Spirit and for you to be completely, your whole being to be filled and flooded with God, with His Holy Spirit. That begins to so culture you, as I call it, the anointing of your inheritance, that it becomes obvious in your mannerisms, in your character, your nature, your talking, your, your reacting, your responding, that there is a certain nature about you, a certain character that isn't natural to your natural birth, but is natural to your heavenly birth. It is the nature of the Father so perfectly revealed in the Son. What we see in Jesus is God. In all that Jesus is, says and does, he's perfectly revealed as God. And what you see in him becomes visible in you and you become like him. You have a certain nature about you, a certain character about you, a certain way about you. And while people can still see the natural nature, the heavenly nature is also there. And this, if I, make a, if I may make a side note, is what people that don't know Christ living in them do not understand about us who do have Him. People that don't have Christ in you base their religion upon their ability to be religious. And they strive for it. While that is without question a good thing, you will never reach the intended end of God in your own ability. You need something much greater than your own ability. You need Jesus Christ to come and live in you by His Holy Spirit. And then He enables you with His nature and character to become godly in your nature and character. And, and if you go with me for a moment here to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, right? <clears throat> it says, Verse 6, I find it hard to pass that one over. It's so powerful. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the light, when God says, let there be light, that light, that life-giving word is Christ coming, giving light and that light of life he's commanded to shine in our heart, that which we see shining from the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have this light of life of Christ, this treasure in an earthen natural vessel that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Now that's, this is why friends, it's not enough to do your best while that is important it's not enough. You have to have Jesus Christ enabling you. I love what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 in the Living Bible. He says, I would never dare think anything comes from myself, for my ability is what God works through me. Jesus said the same thing in John 5:19 when he was asked, how did you raise that lame man who had been lame for 38 years? How did you raise him up? Jesus said, the son of man can do nothing of himself except what he sees the father do and the father loves the son and shows him all things that he does himself and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Jesus lived 
out of the Heavenly Father's ability and that life that He lived in the mortal flesh is what He now gives in you and me. And we have this treasure of His life in this earthen vessel and often, listen dearly, dear friends, often in the times of your crushing, in the times of greatest trials, in the times of your greatest loss, in the time of your greatest pain, it is most obvious. <clears throat> Why? Because the outer man is broken down while the inner man becomes visible. And friends, it says here in verse 8 of 2 Corinthians 4, after he says, we have this treasure in the earthen vessel so that the excellence of the power might be of God and not ourselves. And then he says, we're hard pressed on every side, yet we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifest in the body. You see, this is the true spirit of Christianity. We're not just spiritual and having a vision and having a dream of having some prophetic revelation while these are all wonderful blessings. No, we're Christian because of what becomes visible, visible in the flesh, the life of the Son of God. For He, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20, has literally bought us, our spirit, our soul, our body, with His blood. Your body was purchased with the blood of Jesus to become the temple of the Holy Spirit. No other spirit has a right to your body but the Holy Spirit because no one else has bought the right to have you but Jesus Christ alone. And it is His the desire to fill you with all of Himself by the Holy Spirit so that you may become a body filled and flooded with God Himself and have the richest measure of His wonderful life-giving presence. Oh, Maruko Shandaradiya. Oh, if I think about these thoughts, I just want to worship and praise because to have, to be the temple of God, what a riches, what a riches of grace and glory. Me, who am a body of death, now are the temple of the living God because the blood was shed. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus Christ is. It is phenomenal and listen, if you go back here to uh, 2 Corinthians 4, but pick it up at verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man, this natural body, is perishing. I have seen this in the most amazing ways. I have seen it so amazing. I've seen that body as good as dead manifesting that heavenly life that was still in the earthen vessel and not yet taken up into glory with the soul and spirit. I know some people don't know this, but I believe in the saving of the soul according to 1 Peter and so many other scriptures. I'm so grateful that my soul is being consistently, constantly transformed into His likeness by His Spirit, taking on His character in my will, in my thoughts, in my emotions. And I'm becoming conformed to Him by His Spirit. And I will be made perfect in my soul as I see the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I cannot say I'm perfect yet. There's still so much of the natural man. But one thing I can do is forgetting what I used to be like without Christ and keep looking forward to what He's calling me to be in Him and daily through His Spirit in my soul be transformed. My spirit is made alive with Him, but my soul is being transformed and my body is being filled and flooded with Him. Oh, my Father, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 is faithful to sanctify your whole spirit, soul, and body. And he who is faithful will also do to his friends. Be encouraged. But even though you see your outward man with its weaknesses, don't let that be your master, your boss. You may have this pain and that pain and this and, and that. And, and I believe in healing to be like salvation. I live consistently being renewed to near with man by the Holy Spirit, as I'll read to you here in a second, by which I live in that saving grace of knowing I am a an heir together with Christ and a joint heir together with all the saints in heaven. But friends, 
while this body may have its weaknesses, don't let it be your master. Let it embody the Lord, no matter what condition it's in. No matter what condition it's in. Hear me when I say this. Don't let your body be your master. Let Jesus Christ be the master of your body that even in weakness, like I read to you here out of 2 Corinthians 4, hard pressed, crushed, perplexed, persecuted, forsaken, struck down in all these things of life that can come to each and every one of us for whatever reasons in life that Christ is manifest in your body and that people can see the living Savior in heaven revealing himself in you and me, his body here on earth, so that as he lives, we may live also. And for this, you need to not be discouraged, lose heart, even though your outward body, your natural body is perishing because the inward man is being renewed day by day. You see, it's what it says here in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. For our light affliction in this natural body is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which can be seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Friends, when you suffer in this natural body, either challenges physically or the pressures, trials, and hardships, and sorrows of this natural life, you can begin to experience a far greater weight of glory than what your natural body could ever have. Oh, friends, your natural body can have the pleasure of food, the pleasure of physical gratification in, in your physical union with your spouse, and you can have all these pleasures of life, but they cannot be compared to the glories that we receive through our union with Jesus Christ. And I pray that you don't make your body just an object of self-satisfaction in food or in sex, but make your body the temple of the living God by yielding it to Christ consistently and constantly to be renewed by His life-giving Spirit in you. Do you not know that your body was made for the Lord? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18 through 20 to be the temple of the living God. And God wants us to live in that heavenly satisfaction of having His life revealed in us through His Son. And that we're comforted by the spirit of life in Christ, by His indwelling presence, that we're quieted in our natural desires, by the joy of our salvation in Christ, by the partaking of His divine nature, by which we escape the corruption that is in this natural flesh and that we are not just satisfied, but that we delight ourselves in the Lord. Psalm 37, verse four and five, that we say, oh, surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy are following me as I dwell in your house eternally, my loving heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Amen. Have a good day.